Hey everyone, John Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com, and welcome to the Daily Futures and Crypto Market Outlook for tomorrow's trading. Tomorrow being the 4th of the month, going on to uh, well, about midweek now, going into Wednesday. And, well, today was a little bit of a snooze fest. Uh, very, very slow movement. A couple markets definitely had their uh, their time to shine, but overall, it was a very slow experience today. And a lot of that might have to do with the fact, like we were talking about yesterday, we had the German holiday today, there was no US news today. It's just a little bit of a calm, maybe before the storm with everything going on tomorrow. Now, before we jump on in, as always, make sure to swing on over to slingshotfutures.com, scroll down and click on the Join the Daily Outlook newsletter. From there, you'll be able to sign up on our email list, so be notified every time one of these videos comes out along with that in the email we talk about different stocks and Forex and cryptos and you name it it'll show up there if it's moving at some point or another and it's a great newsletter to get your hands on if you're looking for you know sometimes a little bit of extra info to go along with the trading day uh, along with that make sure to click on the live trade room subscription and trial info and you can sign up for a three-day trial in the live trade room you can sit down with us for a couple days see our screens log in and just kind of hang out with us for a couple days and it's a good way to see what we're all about how we approach the markets every day and just generally an inside look into what happens day in and day out uh, now looking at the overall movement we'll start off with euro here again today is one of those days where we had a, an okay amount of movement but not a whole lot accomplished and it, the euro is a prime example of that we had a nice drive lower good bearishness reversed all the way back up to a new high and now we're going to be closing about halfway down again so on the daily well we have an open there, and we're going to be closing right around there, and that is going to be a big old doji uh, with a little more wick on the bottom than on the top, and it is going to be closing bullish. That doesn't really tell us a whole lot, considering they failed off the highs pretty aggressively, but we do obviously know that in the short term, at least, we have a decent amount of bullish sentiment. So we are looking for more of the buy side in the short term. Of course, we want to zoom out here and see what's going on, and the long term has a bearish sentiment. So we have a little bit of a mix here. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean we need to be selling everything, but looking in the grand scheme of things, we had this double bottom low, they tried breaking out underneath it, and they completely failed. And a lot of times what that means is sellers are still interested, but they're not interested at these prices down here. They're, they're basically paying a premium, selling low, hoping it goes lower. Well, they're obviously not interested anymore. Otherwise, this market wouldn't have pulled back this far. So what I'm looking for is major areas of support and resistance to play a key role here. We have an obvious swing high, swing lows, several of them even bounced right there for a little bit. And now we also peaked it around there again. And that's around 18,200. So that zone, that area is going to be a big deal if the market wants to turn back around and try to get going lower. But we're going to need to show some proof. Now, the reason I say a little bit of proof, that area is obviously of interest, but when we look at current price, something isn't quite right. We have an overall bear move to the downside, and we have a breakout lower that failed. And a lot of times, when you have that breakout move lower, they have an overcorrection of the opposite side. So what we're looking for in this case is that overcorrection. We have a breakout distance of about one of these grid blocks here. So we're looking for a break up distance of about that much as well. And that should put resistance at 18,000. Now that's really far lower than we were talking about 18,200. But the key here is if they do start holding resistance at 18,000 and give it a buffer, you know, 18,050 inside there, and we fail to get going back up there, or they make a little poke out the highs and then fail back down again, that could be the, the sign that this major level of resistance at 18,200 18, is succeeding and we are now looking to cycle back down to the major lows. If, however, we come back into this area and we start breaking above it, that's a little bit of a different situation. We're looking for the buyers to begin taking over the market and push higher from there. So we have a little bit of waiting to do to see what the market wants to do for uh, just general movement, and then we can respond. So moving on over to the gold market. Now, gold is... Uh, uh, well, range bound at the very best. Uh, we're having a really hard time at these lows. The previous low of day at 1272, uh, that's just, it seems like it's a brick wall or I guess a brick floor. Uh, th they're having a really hard time getting through 1272. Uh, and so far, the buyers are trying to defend it. Now, like we were talking about yesterday in the outlook, we have a very bearish trend lower. And we are running out of steam at the bottom, right? So we are seeing them kind of taper off a little bit. 
But what really stands out to me is the fact that now we're starting to lift into a major area of resistance. We have the wedge top, we have a monthly level of resistance floating around there at 78.2. We've already put in a little bit of support and resistance just visually with swing lows inside there, swing highs inside there, all around that 1277 area. This whole zone right around another high is going to be a big, big deal. Now, where we stand at the moment, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. I don't really want to do anything with gold at the moment, but if we can get one more push to the highs, we start running into all of those levels of resistance between 77 up to 78.2, and that is going to be a hotbed for orders to start pummeling into the market to the sell side. Right now, we are seeing a little bit of bearishness coming off of the highs. They formed a, a kind of a miss on the double top there and failed back down again, but Overall, being the, that we're right in the middle of nowhere, near that big level of support at around 73.5 next up, I think we're better off just not doing anything. And honestly, I would rather wait for that test above between 77 and 78, and that area is where I'm going to have a lot of emphasis to look for potential shorting opportunities to drive the market back down again. So right now on gold, I think we're in a holding pattern, just kind of waiting for a, an opportune area to strike. We're just not there yet. Uh, over on crude oil, crude oil, very, very range bound. This is about as cyclical as you can get. You have a new low into a new high into a new low into a new high. And now we're resting near the lows and we're probably going to make a new low. Uh, so overall, we've just been pinging off of both sides. And right now we're in a, we're in a little bit of a wedge, but the overall anticipation is that we break down to a new bottom. Once this wedge starts breaking down, I'm looking for a correction back up to retest and then sell that retest to drive the market back lower to at least 5023, if not further to a new low. And based on the way that these breakouts are happening, we can see this breakout here was pretty shallow. If we go backward a little bit, actually, let me zoom the chart back here. There we go. So we have the breakout of the highs, decent distance. We have a breakout of the lows. Again, not a huge amount, but a decent distance. When they broke down of this low, that was a good move, about 15, 20 ticks. Uh, and then we broke out of these highs over here in a relatively shallow move. So if we do break down through 23, we're anticipating a breakdown of between five and 10 ticks. It seems to be about the average distance, more weighted on that five area. So really that leaves us with a low side. If we're we're looking at the low being at 22 we're anticipating the breakdown to be to about 17 on the low side so potential selling opportunities around here to drive the market down to 17 and that might be all she wrote on the downside uh, for crude oil before they start cycling back up again it's just a range bound mess we do have the overall beautiful bearish trend to work with and we're grinding lower but uh, the next objective below that would be that previous low day at 50.07, but that's really about all we have to work with. So looking for some selling pressure here down to around 17. And then from there, probably going to see some buyers trying to cycle it back up again. And then there's the S&P. Uh, the S&P was a little bit of a train wreck for the U.S. session. Uh, it didn't accomplish much of anything. It just got stuck and then it got stuck some more and then it broke down and then it got stuck again. It was just an absolute mess. We were stuck in a range bound move. Well, you can see right here between 26 and 29, really a three point range for uh, the better part of 12 hours before we finally started breaking higher. That's kind of the environment that we've been dealing with here on the S&P lately. And right now we're creating a little bit of a cycle. They try to put in a bottom. There's an obvious floor here, whether it's one big buyer or several, it doesn't matter. They obviously defended it. And with that rotation to the upside, they started pushing into the highs of the range and they broke higher. Now, if you measure the average range high to the average range low and deviate it up, meaning measure it and then double it up again, you have the level of resistance at 23, uh, 25, 32 half. And notice the response that we had there. That's a big deal. That's showing that although it is very slow and range bound and they're grinding higher, they're still paying attention to these deviations to the upside. Now, if they do want to continue through, the next one is going to be right there at 35.75. So this is definitely an overnight level that we want to keep our eyes on and likely going to deviate up if they do want to continue. The overall trend is definitely bullish. You don't want to mess with the buyers when it comes to the S&P or the SPY. Just a monster rip up over the past, well, I mean, nine years, really. But the overall continuation that we're seeing here, buyers may be looking for a pullback. We are going with the overall trend. It makes a lot of sense to wait for a pullback. And I would love to buy that intermediary range at 29 and a quarter. Shallowest pullback, I would say you're probably going to get a bounce for at least a scalp at around these previous 
really like what quadruple tops quintuple tops into a double bottom triple bottom even that area is going to be a nice potential bounce area to push the market back up for a scalp but really we're kind of pinned at the highs and normally you'd be thinking well buy low sell high stay out of the middle but this isn't the kind of environment that I really want to sell high. The only selling that I want to do at the highs is with profit targets. So looking to buy in on a dip. And then from there, we may be able to catch another run up to the next deviation higher. So don't lose sight of those. So that's going to do it for the outlook on the future side of things. Looking at the calendar tomorrow, we have stuff on the calendar. Woo, right, finally. 4.30 tomorrow morning out of the UK, we have the services PMI for September forecasted at 53.2. It's the same as the previous. At 8.15 tomorrow morning, we have the ADP non-farm employment change for September, forecasted at 125,000. At 10 o'clock, we have the ISM non-manufacturing PMI for September, forecasted at 55.5. We have the crude oil inventories, right now forecasted it at a negative 0.756, so a really small balanced sort of number. We'll have to wait and see what the API does here in about 10 minutes. Uh, and then going on the afternoon session at 13.15 Eastern time, we have ECB President Draghi speaking. At 15.15, we have Federal Chairwoman Yellen speaking. And then later in the evening session at 20.30 out of Australia, we have the retail sales month over month for August forecasted at 0.3%. So there is finally a bunch of stuff going on tomorrow. Uh, it's better than having a completely calm day and a holiday on top of everything else. Fingers crossed we can get some good movement to go into tomorrow's trading session. Now, looking over on the crypto side of things, we have a lot of things of interest here. First of all, Bitcoin is finally pulling back a little bit here. Uh, we're getting a little bit of balance off of the earlier areas of interest. Now, if we look at this, this is the previous swing high into double bottom swing low. We've already found a good $100 bounce off of that level two times. The third time bounced about $50. This zone is definitely something that the buyers are paying attention to. Now, the hot spot that's really standing out to me is the fact that we have the rising level of support coming into play, and we have this area that's starting to really kind of stick around. If we can get those to couple together in the next few hours, we may have a launch pad to rocket the market back up towards those highs and push into those 4,500s. Again, we're still not at the overall highs. We've got plenty of room to go until we start running into those. The next area of resistance is at 46.82 uh, and about 80 cents or so, 46.82.80. And then from there, we're looking for that 5,000, that magical 5,000 level on Bitcoin. Uh, so right now, just dealing with an ascending wedge, that blew off the highs a little bit, and that could lead to an overcorrection on the bottom. But at the moment, it's obvious that the buyers are definitely supporting price right here, not to mention the previous swing highs and lows all coming in the same place. So looking for an overnight bounce to the upside, uh, and if it does start breaking through, then we're looking for a deeper pullback back to that 4,000 level once again to see if the buyers want to participate there. Over on Bitcoin Cash, not a whole lot going on for, for the... Uh, the cash really is just kind of stuck more than anything else. We have a descending wedge. We have a larger descending wedge. We are getting stuck in this area of interest at around 400. This is a level that we've been talking about for a long period of time, not just the previous swing lows, but we also have the major swing lows from before then. And if we go further back in price, right, if we zoom way far out, those are also the major swing highs right around that same price. So this is a big level of interest at around 400. Long-term buyers will probably be buying into this. My dog even agrees. Uh, Long-term buyers will be buying into this for sure, looking to hang on for probably the next few months. I still think Bitcoin Cash is in a situation that they're not sure what to do. We have the next hard fork coming up in, uh, you know, by the end of this month. What's going to happen to a forked currency that's getting another fork, right? What What is going to happen? I think there's a lot of confusion going on with Bitcoin Cash, and a lot of people aren't really sure what to do. So we may just be in a holding pattern until then. But for right now, we are in an area of long-term buying potential. On Ethereum, I think long-term buying, we need to see a little bit more of a pullback. We have major, major support that's been serpentining its way through this area at around 280 uh, for quite a while. Those are the major swing lows that are all through here, major swing highs, swing lows, swing highs and lows, major swing low. Everything is dealing with this range inside of here between at 282 down to 276 seems to be the major buying area. And that's kind of where I'm looking to find the market dipping down to. I wanna see Ethereum dip down to an area of good support and then push back up from there. We have a level of falling resistance that we just can't seem to break. We are now forming a new tighter level of support underneath us. 
not the most solidified area. The next one below that would be here. But if we can start breaking down, it doesn't look too bad, especially if we zoom in here. We can see we're starting to gain larger rising support. We have the major zone. We also have flatter support coming through there. Everything is lining up in the exact same place all inside of that magic zone between 282 down to 276. So I'm looking for major buying support out of there. Right now, yeah, we're just kind of in the middle. I think we're waiting until we get that pullback. Over on Litecoin, very similar situation. Uh, if we zoom out, we can see that this area, once again, major level of support and resistance all through here. And again, this is kind of what we've been dealing with on the cryptos for a while. Litecoin may be a little bit different in that we could have an overall range a little bit larger, something like this. Uh, and if that is the case, we'd be looking for a deeper push down to around 45. But at the moment, as long as we're finding some balance around these previous swing highs, previous swing lows, this kind of cluster of support inside of here, we need to be paying attention to the fact that, well, this zone at around, uh, if you want to cut it in half, around 51.75 or so, is going to be a big location of interest. Buyers are going to be looking to buy into there trying to get that continuation of the upside and finish off at least the $60 mark. Remember, we're cycling off of a top of 100 or almost 100. There's a lot of people who probably bought way back here up in the 90s who are not feeling so great. In the long run, they'll probably be able to get out of break even if, but they are being given an option to buy really cheap. And that's where we are right now uh, on, uh, on kind of a, a sale price at about half off. I think a lot of buyers are gonna be utilizing this area at around 50.75 for that launch pad to start building into positions to drive the market back up. Over on NEO, we are pulling back here on NEO as well, uh, testing the earlier level of support that we were looking at from before, those previous kind of swing highs, swing lows, all in the same place, just below that as well, at around 32. I would still absolutely love to see 26 to 25 in lower, anything below that, I, I'm looking at it as very much on sale. But right now, we're cycling off the highs of the wedge top, right? Draw these up right there, and that does create a potential channel low. Now, if we can cycle around for a little while, we will have this level that extends far enough forward where we could end up bouncing off of something like this, and that could be what we're looking for. A couple days of range isn't unheard of when you're talking about the cryptos. Cough, cough, nudge, nudge right there. So we may just go sideways for a little while until we get that springboard to take place, and then from there, it's off to the races again. This is the pullback that we were talking about around $40. It came a little bit earlier than I thought, but overall, we're still looking for the overall objective back to the high and I'm still looking at NEO thinking that we might see this market by or near 100 before the end of the year. It just needs to consolidate a little bit, get some traders active again, uh, and give them a little bit of a pause. We're on sale right now, uh, and I think short-term scaling in doesn't necessarily hurt anything, but I would love to see that pullback down to 25. Now, a new one that kind of jumped up on the list here, if we look at the crypto CryptoCoinMarketCap.com, now the website CoinMarketCap.com shows you the overall market cap of all of the different currencies. Now, obviously, Bitcoin is on the top. Uh, but if we look through a lot of the other coins, these are all ones that we talk about very frequently. Ethereum, Ripple's a big one, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin. You get the idea. These are the big names. These are the ones that are around quite a bit. And you'll notice Neo stepping into the number eight position now while it's grinding higher. Really good to see that. But one that jumped up, right, it just kind of popped up out of nowhere, is Cardano. Number 17 already. Uh, is Cardano. Now it's sitting at about two cents uh, and that makes sense. They have a big, big amount uh, of, uh, I guess, shares or coins uh, available. In this case, you have 25.9 billion, right? And that's with a B. Now, the other markets that have those kinds of things, if we look up a little bit further, we have IOTA at two trillion. Uh, we have another one, Ripple, which is another big one at 38 billion. A lot of these markets that have a huge amount of coins, you'll notice one very consistent thing. They're priced between 20, 25 cents, up to 50 cents or so. And that's fairly common. When you have that many coins, it's going to be very difficult to get the market to move by any significant amount because there's so much supply. So what I'm looking at with Cardano, which if you haven't looked into it, it's definitely something to check out. I think it has a great long-term potential. It has the backing of the the, uh, the guy from Ethereum Classic. He was also in Ethereum, moved over to Cardano. Uh, I think it's a great potential long-term asset that we may be able to find this rising up towards that 20 to 30, 40 cent area 
by the end of next year, maybe mid next year. This is a longer term type of play that I'm looking at here on ADA. Uh, now, just to specify, Cardano's coin is called ADA, uh, so don't get that confused, okay? Um, but I'm looking at this with with such a gargantuan market cap of, or, or at least a market coinage of almost 26 billion. We've got a good chance that at two cents, this could be very undervalued considering the other markets in that same general area are floating around 20 to 50 cents. So I think this has easily a tenfold increase potential uh, behind it. It just is going to take a little bit of time. Now, looking at ADA on the chart, we are very, very cheap. As you can see, we just opened up uh, and we spiked up, right? They caught a big, big rally to the upside at around 1800. I think they peaked. What's the peak on that? Uh, the peak on that was at 2,000 Satoshi. So a 2,000 Satoshi pulled all the way back down, and now we're just hovering around these lows at around 500 to 400. This is a big area of interest. I'm looking at 500s and below as on sale, and I would really love to see around that 450 area to start picking up. Again, I'm looking at this coin over the next... Uh, I mean, months to potentially even years. I think this has a very bright future and with such a huge amount of coinage comparative to the other ones that it's already jumped on the list in position 17 we have a good chance of this tenfolding its way up by the end of the year or mid to early next year and that's kind of what i'm looking for so a really interesting long-term play i would urge you to definitely look at it uh it's something that uh, looks really interesting uh go to cardano's website and you'll be able to read up all about it we've got videos and all kinds of cool stuff it's just an interesting uh an interesting type of blockchain technology that's coming out and it's very similar to ethereum except it's a little bit more backed with science and math which i am a big fan of so that's going to do it for the outlook though uh, overall regardless Regardless of the market that you're approaching, tomorrow might be a little bit of a whippy one, so it's very important going into tomorrow. But like we always say, make that plan, trade the plan, follow those rules, and you'll be A-OK. -okay. Until next time, we'll see you all then.